Hello and welcome to a Smurp P video and today we are looking at Avengers X-Men Externals Judgment Day Issue 1 and um, obviously I have to apologise because I am way behind on this and I think Issue 4 has just been released if I am correct. So we get this opening and it is, I forgot the world talking, saying you know, there you are, you do not know me. I wish to know you. I do not yet exist. Blah, 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 blah. Fun and games. And let's see who the players are for this series. So there we go. It's got a little bio there. This is written by Kieran Gillen, who is a great writer. Um, Valerio, and I'm going to apologize because I may say this wrong. See it. Um, Marathi. Garcia, once again, I apologize if I said that wrong. And Clayton Cows is on the letters, and he's from BC. So here are all the characters. Here you got Avengers, you got X Men, you've got Externals. And the story begins with Tony Stark talking to. Um, what's her name? Cersei. That is how our story begins. Um, and however, they are. Uh, sort of toying with each other uh, and so see uh, they're talking about mutants and the fact that they are returned to life and that they weren't this was sort of unexpected that's our thing and the phoenix comes get that right phoenix comes flying in to take Cersei out of the game with four and Captain Marvel. Meanwhile on Earth, Cyclops says, was that the Phoenix? It seems so odd that the Phoenix is a, an Avenger. I feel like we should be, we're, we're possessive over, <laughs> over that. Um, but Jean is distracted by the ramifications of them reaching out and telling the world that they can resurrect and the humans, they are there. Now it's not about being hate, hated and feared as which is normal this is jealousy jealousy that they cannot bring them back you got this girl in, in this woman in her head she's screaming you know my daughter's dead i want her back etc those sort of things but the five cannot resurrect everybody it is impossible meanwhile on Krakola, we get a uh, kurt raven and irene talking about this war coming now destiny at the moment is trying to read where is this war coming from who will it be from and uh, they obviously know that orchis is primed and ready to go however it is not them not them at all and then eventually it comes out with the external so a rush to the quiet council and erico as akena as well to discuss it so they, I guess, split their resources to reach to the two nations. And we get this marvelous moment on Arico, uh, where they are talking about the air they believe, breathe and monarch. And um, Magneto doesn't like it being called Mars. However, um, he says, bravo, monarch of Mars, two seconds later, which I thought was weird. It's weird. So they are discussing it and discussing how they can do that. Cable's obviously roped in with his experience in war. And he's got a few ideas, etc. And it's coming. Um, the externals are coming. Meanwhile, back in Avengers Mountain, Iron Man is questioning Cersei over what they're doing and we not that i've read it but there is clearly some backstory in the externals uh, issues i think it's like issues one to maybe nine or twelve in that first run which i think was released 21 22 which i guess leads more up to this and we learned that uh there was some externals being led by Thanos, and only the externals could stop it and Tony Stark acknowledges that sometimes we do good, bad things with, you know, when we're up against it, we make some weird decisions, etc. 
So I say also says that she is not part of this band of externals that they are referring to. Katamira comes in even though there is a risk that uh, Cersei may come out. But he says that she's an Avenger. And we should really be trying to approach this a little bit differently. But the externals are going to war. Now, um, Cersei's finding this hard to believe. She was not aware of this. And that it was coming, etc. And then she reminds them that we are not uh, a team or anything. We are a society. A uh, society that she is no longer part of. But this confrontation is on its way. Meanwhile, Jurid, who is behind this. And he talks about the... These deviants, that's what he is seeing. Mutants, now mutants can live forever. These deviants are even more dangerous than he ever imagined. And it's the external's duty to destroy them. And he's speaking to his council for this approval to do this. And he goes to exclusion where we um, meet Uranus, which um, he's, he talks about people. He says, you know, it takes nine months for them to make another one breathe. But human can crush a windpipe in seconds. See what I can do with an hour. It's very, very sinister and malicious. Meanwhile, back on Earth. I didn't expect to see Moira in this issue, by the way. But Moira McTaggart, who is part of Orchis, is making her play. Speaking with the externals. And she, you know. And I was actually thinking that... Actually... Why does she hate the mutant so much? I um, mean, okay, Mystique Destiny made her human and then they were hunting her down when she was human and she's lost. She's no longer part of their community. And, and it all boils down to being betrayed, feeling betrayed and having a grudge. Now we have Wolverine and, well, it's not gold balls anymore. It is Egg uh, walking on the beach. So Moira, in the background, is given the secrets of what the externals must do if they are going to attack. And that is by attacking this council. And attacking them because they have powerful psychics. And if they can take out the council for a period of time, they may stand a chance to um, do some real damage. So they committed this force in the uni mind, which if you've uh, watched me review Immortal X-Men, that story sort of drops into there more than here. But she says, that is not all. You have a whole line of mutants that you have to take. And he says, so earlier in this, what I didn't say is, Moira talks about um, Mystique and Destiny. So where Myth Destiny said to Mystique, if they won't bring me back, burn it. And um, he refers to that saying, actually, you know what? I believe you said something about burning. He likes that idea. So they attack Kr Krakola and uh, the alarm is sounded. The X-Men are on their way, uh, which is far from ideal. And it means that magic can do bring in lots of resources, etc. But Moira says it's not the X-Men that are the issue. It's the 2,000 mutants. But it's also the million of mutants that are hard, hardened, war-torn veterans from another dimension. That have been in centuries of sieges. They are the ones to watch out. They are the ones on Acrola. And um, Jared's... Uh, responses he disagrees on three accounts one the mutants are deviants two okay this is this and well let me just say that erico isn't going to be an issue he doesn't say that in actual words but um he says it's going to be less than a million very soon and pretty much um it's about to go down but they just get out just well, Nightcrawler just gets out. So, thank you for mapping their weaknesses. But you know what? Their immortality stems from five mutants. They're the ones that we're going to get with our assassins, etc. So you can see Gold Balls is done. 
Hope's about to be done. Who's a red in Mortal X Men? Well, knows that Wolverine comes in. Anyway, he gets pretty busted, and he he only gets there in time because he smells the blood from the assassin, because the the assassin didn't wipe off the blood after hunting, etc. So um, he reached out to Jean to say that the five are in danger. We must secure the five. I mean, you can see other mutants there as well. So um. They miss their chance, they run off, etc. Much to Moira's annoyance, but he says, Patience, you've not seen the bigger picture. Their bigger picture is what has happened elsewhere. So Gold Balls is brought back really quickly. So they must make the five eggs ready for such scenario. That is their backup plan. Uh, Kurt manages to get through the door, uh, as, as I said. Um, but he says, we must bring them back. Arako needs leadership now. So all of a sudden it's like, what on earth has happened on Arako? Where is Hope's dad, for example, which is great. So Cable is back up and he screams out, what happened? And I, you know, it sends me back to animated series Cable. No. And we soon find out that Arako is dust. Bones and dust. What he did in that hour, Uranus, was absolutely brutal. But he said he wants to go back out, um, but he is contained in this thing, and things aren't that bad yet. But he just says, let me out, I'll do it. So um, a message comes out for Jewett, reaching out to the world about mutants, saying, you know, we are here for the world, to protect the world. That is what we do. However, one thing I ask of you, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what we're about to unleash. They are huge, they are scary, but they are there to protect you in whatever shape and form they are created. So we have these uh, new creatures that are about to be unleashed to destroy mutants, etc. Caps shouts the Avengers, assemble alarm quite quickly. And then they talk about Cersei being locked up. But one thing that they want to know is why have they separated from the other group? What is going on? What are their reasons? So Tony Stark implemented a few um, security measures to, if the external tried to break into Avengers Man again, he would sense them. And he does, and they go, they, he captures them, etc. You know, don't try and um, test me. And she said, that's not what I was doing. I, I did this method because I know this method, it was a quick way to get in. We need to talk to you. They have Mr. Sinister in hand, who disappeared in Immortal X-Men. And they talk about the possibilities. They talk about the war is written in scriptures. And the only way to change that is by building a dog. Uh, sorry, dog. Uh, which is God, spelled backwards, by the way. <laughs> they have to build a God. Tony likes that idea. Um, you know, I could do that in a few hours. What am I going to make it with? Um, and uh, she says, look around you, Mr. Stark. Off the Avengers. We have everything we need in the, the celestial that has become their mountain. And those who have been watching my X-Men uh, have realized that he is, this is the one judging everyone. Yeah, that was terrible. Anyway, I, I actually thoroughly enjoyed that issue more than I thought I would. Um, I, I sometimes don't go big on these crossovers. I don't, I don't enjoy them because uh, it affects my X-Men world. But um, I like this. This was actually pretty decent. So um, let's, uh, let's hope it continues because these things can easily go horribly wrong if not written correctly. But I have faith in Kieran being the writer on this to deliver a Sank special. So anyway, hope you like my video. If you do, please support my channel by subscribing. Make sure you look after yourself. Very important these days. And if you are subscribed, thank you for your support. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you look after yourself. I think I've said that already, but it is important. And embrace geekiness. Take care. Goodbye.